Okay. <laughs> Clarissa Smith, occupational therapist by trade. And what I'm going to do first is go ahead, I'm going to talk to everybody. Why are you here? What's your major going to be? What are you thinking? Just give me your name and what area you think you're going to be going into. And I'm going to start right here. And how it's going to infiltrate you and influence you, right? Mm -hmm. So you can make a decision. Since you're seniors, I can be a little bit more direct in what I'm saying. You can make a decision. So you've made a decision for a physical therapy assistant program. You have no excuse, right? You don't have an excuse. You don't have an excuse not to finish the program. You don't have an excuse not to start the program. Somebody who was homeless as a child. Um, I was telling the last group, and I, I'm going to go ahead and say it now for this group, is that I think I got into health care because of what my mom, what happened with my mom. I saw my mom get shot at eight. And I was actually standing right beside her when the guy did it. And I think from that point, she had a colostomy bag, a boo-boo bag, that you had to um, take care of and empty the boo-boo out. And I was eight, I was the oldest daughter, so I did that part. But I think I started early because of that. So whatever you go, you're going into health care for a reason. But that piece, I think, pulled me into health care and the compassion to be able to love and want to take care. Um, after she got shot, I was hanging over the car, and I had, to, I had a cloth in my hand. I had to wipe her mouth and watch, watch her go to the hospital. When she came back, I had to help take care of that strong poop, and that was my first exposure to taking care of someone at eight years old. And you're talking about that. But before that, you know, I was homeless for years, and we slept outside. I got marks on my legs now, but the point is this. It's not where you've been, right? We have, everyone has a story, and you can't say that you have an excuse. So since you have no excuse, you've got to work for it. That means, look, look, nobody's going to give you anything. It's over. As a senior, I'm a little bit different with this class. As a senior, it's over for you. No pity parties. None. Because you either get with it or get left behind now. Because the world is moving so fast. The technology is moving so fast. I'm having a hard time keeping up with it. Keeping up with the songs. The music alone is challenging. And I can't understand some of it, you know. And y'all do these funny dances and all this stuff. I mean, it's just, huh. I feel like I'm a senior citizen for real. But you have to work for it starting at home and respecting your parents at home. Give me an idea. So at home, I believe a lot of this starts at home. You need to work. You need to be up doing chores. Put the cell phone up. You need to be up working at home, making sure you're doing what your parents or grandparents or your elders telling you to do. That spills over to school. You got to work at school, right? They're not just going to give you the grades. You've got to earn it. You cannot have, okay, you say you want to be an RN, I heard an RN in here, I heard OT, I heard RPT, I heard psychologist, really? Psychology, that's work. A lot of study, a lot of research, a lot of papers, all that's going As rough as it was, barely graduating from school, I still had to make some decisions on what I wanted. Right? You have to, you alone going to make those decisions. If you don't make a decision, that's making a decision. Not to make a decision. Okay? So I had to work. You have to be a cut above. If you want to be average, the world is average. We got enough mediocre people. Do you want to be a cut above?